Hello, everyone, and welcome to Geeks Not Nerds, the podcast. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Vince. And I'm Pastor X. Pastor X, welcome once again to the program. Thank you. And uh, today we are going to uh, talk about probably a myriad of things, but I wanted to start with um, just I asked, asking pastors some questions about stuff. Actually, um, I uh, because I'm sure I'm sure people on the program are going to find it uh, really really interesting that we got a pastor to be on our show, and uh, that we found and that and that we found a pastor who is uh, who is a big comic book fan and big into pop culture in general. And so I guess um, my uh, what, what I, where I was hoping we could start this is to simply ask you uh, how you. This is going to sound like a loaded question, but uh, how how you how you juggle uh, being being a pastor, that being your your job, and how you, how you juggle that with also being uh, being a fan of movies and comics and those sorts of things, and uh, how you how you deal with uh, with with people who are who are put off by that or confused by that. Well, I think uh, people who are confused or put off by it uh, don't know about it, so they're really not put off by it. Hence the title Pastor X rather than my real name. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's even some temerity even now that when people find out that I, I like reading comic books or that I like uh, Karl Barks or that I like werewolf movies, that uh, I will fall in their esteem. So I don't know that I'm as honest with everyone as I need to be. But as far as how I view it myself, we're all human beings. We have a holistic approach to life. I mean, I don't say to somebody who is an architect, well, how do you justify being an architect and still liking Star Trek? Mm -hmm. uh, you can like many things. Uh, you know, we have 24 hours during the day, and we only sleep between 6 and 10, or whatever it may be. And there's a whole lot of time left for many things. And we all have our hobbies, our interests, our, our uh, passions. And I think comic books, uh, that's just one of mine. Now, now why do you think there, that people perceive that conflict between that? I mean, because I don't see that they're, they're mutually exclusive from one another. No, I don't see they're exclusive at all. I think, though, with comic books, funny books, as they were called in the 40s and 50s, when they were primarily funny animals, the Bigfoot version, uh, I think... I think they, if, if you're a pastor, they, they are expecting you to take Paul's admonition in one of his epistles that uh, when, I, when I was a child, I had childish things, and when I grew up, I put away my childish things. But I don't see where good storytelling and good visual art and uh, themes that I think resonate through all of our lives, uh, I don't see why those things are childish. And comic books certainly can be read by kids, as you two have mentioned on on podcasts in the past, but comic books are not childish, not in the least. Yeah, it's it's uh, the comics are just another medium, and uh, they're they're the the only American invented medium, which I feel the need to mention sometimes because people don't think about that. It's it's uh, it's 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 a really it's a really interesting thing if you think about it. Um, as a medium, comics themselves have only existed for about a hundred years, uh, and that's 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 really fascinating to me. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with them. It's it's a it's a medium that is both visual and text based all at the same time. And why does that have to necessarily be a childish, a childish medium. I'd like to say this: comics, westerns, and jazz. We've added comics. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, sure. Fantastic. But I mean, as as a as a medium, I mean, jazz is a subgenre of music. I mean, well, I mean, the, comics the, the is its own are, medium. Things that are entertainment that are truly American. Right, right. And uh, I've always heard westerns and jazz, westerns and jazz, and. Uh, What's funny is comics have kind of become owned by the Japanese in a way. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because like, because like everybody in Japan reads comics, and and uh, and they don't seem to have this thing of oh well, those are childish. That's only kids read those. That's a good point. And that m manga book that w was put out in the '80s, I forget the name or the author, but I was. Akira? I think so. Akira. Okay. Yeah, I was amazed when I read that uh, adults in Japan on the subway or the bullet train or whatever they ride. Uh, to a man, almost was they were reading, you know, these manga, uh, and they're for adults. They're written for adults. You know, I read in uh, David Hadou's *The Ten Cent Plague*, which is a terrific book, by the way. Check it out. But, I've read uh, about half of it. It is it is really fascinating. I've read selections, so mm -hmm. because I was doing using it for a paper, but uh, I read within that book that uh, comics were sort of a loved medium, a beloved medium within the around about the 40s and 50s, new, interesting type stuff. So even adults were getting into it. I'm not sure if there's any truth to that, because I just found it one sentence in David Hadou's work. 
But uh, I thought it'd be interesting to bring up, considering that uh, the Japanese adults are reading manga. And uh, maybe it's just something that got lost over generations here in America. I also think that, that uh, you, have to, you have to separate the fact that comics are considered to be mostly for adults and the fact that comics were written exclusively by adults. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, because when, 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 you go into, when you go into pulp magazines and stuff like that, those stories weren't all kid stories. And in fact, a lot of them weren't. I mean, you had, you had you know, really noirish detective stories. You had some, some, really, some really, even by today's standards, somewhat frightening uh, uh, horror stories and, mm -hmm. uh, and monster stories and things like that. And it was primarily kids reading them. But the adults that were writing them were writing them for themselves. You know? Because they they had, a, they had a draw paycheck. They 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 wrote what they wrote and draw and drew what they, they wrote and draw. English major. <laughs> they they wrote they wrote and drew what they what they wanted to what they liked to read. You know, uh, an interesting note. You bring up pulp novels, and uh, I may be wrong about this, but I read somewhere that uh, the preferred genre of writing for us. Uh, I'm completely confusing my my context here, but uh, syntax is the word I'm looking for. But uh, Apparently, college professors, their preferred reading material is pulp novels. You said that before. And I find that interesting. And that uh, brings us sort of back to the, uh, the idea that uh, a reverend can read comic books. And uh, not every... <laughs> I just thought of a, a joke that we say at, at KU. But uh, not every, uh, every college professor has to be reading Dickens all the time. Mm -hmm. So, not that there's anything wrong with comic books, I'm just saying. I think Vince makes a, a perfect point here, it's, and I would uh, compare it with a, a balanced diet. I mean, I like steak, I like shrimp, but you know, you can also eat peanuts and you can eat broccoli, which I, I like both of those as well. Uh, I do like to read Dickens. Uh, there's a lot of heavy literature that I do imbibe in, and of course, theological tomes all the time. Right. Uh, but I like watching animated cartoons. I like uh, I like reading Karl Barks. I like a good Ray Harryhausen movie with stop-mo uh, animation. Uh, the world is big. Uh, the Lord has made a huge panoply of, of delights that fill this cosmos. And I think indulging the five senses, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, we're not talking yet here about themes. We're not talking about good versus evil. No. We're not talking about the abuses of any medium. Sure. Uh, obviously, not just a pastor, but... Uh, uh, a good-natured atheist or agnostic or, you know, Hindu snake charmer would all agree with me that you have bad uh, examples in all of these genres. Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> but but at the same time, uh, you don't stay away from a film, just you personally, I mean, you don't stay away from a film just based on a rating. No, never. No. I think... I, I always have had less problems with uh, violence if the violence is... is germane to the movie, to the plot. If it's a war movie or a gangster movie or, or a gangland movie, uh, violence seems to, you know, to be part and parcel with the plot. I, I've had more problems with simulated sex scenes, sure. but uh, that's also my generation coming, as I do from the, the 50s and the 1960s. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting that you bring that up, the, uh, the sex scenes, because some movies are art house movies about sex. Last Tango in Paris with yes. uh, Marlon Brando, which unfortunately I haven't seen, but I'm completely aware of. And uh, <laughs> but uh, and then you have movies like Daredevil, which had an inserted sex scene for whatever reason. Right, and the director's cut doesn't have that because it wasn't originally supposed to be there. And in fact, it's uh, and in fact that scene is completely different in the in what was supposed to be the real version, uh, but obviously now isn't considered to be the real version, uh, which is they're on the roof and he hears someone getting hurt, and so he leaves. And then in the theatrical cut, they just threw the sex scene in there because they thought, oh well, this is this is a this is this PG thirteen movie that is an action film, and so we have to have we have to have that in there. So I'd almost say that uh, sexuality can be germane to a plot. It can, so. yes. I think there's a, there's an element of voyeurism. I think that sometimes will will rear its head. Uh, you know, we don't need to see the main character, whether it's a book, a comic book, or a movie. You know, going to the bathroom necessarily. Right. We don't need to <laughs> right. see the the bodily functions performed. Uh, they're not always really plot, they don't move the plot along, they don't, uh, so I would say the same with, with many of the sexual scenes in some movies. As uh, Hitchcock says, movies are life with the boring parts cut out. Oh, I like that, Vince. I wish I would have said that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, me too. Vince says it all the time, and I still never think about it. I don't know. But no, no, that's that, that's absolutely right. I thought Hitchcock said if you show the bomb in scene one ticking, you've got to have it going off in scene five. No, maybe not. Go ahead. That's a, that's a Chekhov kind of thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not the Star Trek Chekhov, but uh, the player 